Hi, so my name's Olivia Merritt, and I'm one of the uh, senior heritage advisors um, within the National Environment Assessment and Sustainability Team at the Environment Agency, otherwise known as NIAS, and we support flood and coastal risk management projects. So um, I'm one of lots of experts in uh, carbon at the Environment Agency as we are striving to meet our target for um, net zero by 2030. Um, I also sit on, uh, I'm heritage representative on the Friends of Carbon working group for, um, uh, for the EA, and I've been involved with uh, the de development of guidance for um, material selection for construction projects um, to um, focus on reducing carbon solutions. So I'm one of 13 archaeologists um, within the AS, um, four of whom are also here in this room, I believe. You can put your hands up and wave. So we've got uh, two principal archaeologists. We've got Ed Wilson over here, who is um, operational unit manager for specialist services. So he oversees the heritage and landscape teams, and we have a similar size team of uh, landscape architects. Um, and we also have Stephen Kemp, who is um, flood and coast erosion risk management organizational lead. Um, and he is also the primary contact for our key external stakeholders, such as Historic England, uh, National Trust, DEFRA. Um, and then we have 11 heritage advisors. Um, so we've got Jenny Young and um, Sarah Howard here in the room as well, who um, um, support our NIAS team across the regions on uh, flood and coastal risk management projects. So our key objectives are um, to protect the historic environment, but whilst promoting sustainable development and, uh, and reducing carbon footprint. Um, and we seek to do this in order to support the key priorities of the Environment Agency, which are to protect lives and property from flooding whilst increasing climate resilience. Don't know which button to press. Oh, yep, yeah, that's the one. Um, so construction uh, contributes 49% of, of the Environment Agency's carbon footprint, which is a huge amount. Um, and as I said earlier, the EA has made a promise to become carbon neutral by 2030. Um, so we're looking to do that through 45% reduction in our carbon um, footprint, and the rest will be covered through um, carbon offset. Um, but this isn't a target that solely applies to the Environment Agency. It also applies across our entire supply chain. So all of our contractors and subcontractors um, are required to meet the same targets. So how are we going to do this? So we have a few uh, measures that we're pursuing in order to meet this target. Um, one is through sustainable design and careful project planning. So reduce, reducing uh, machine time in order to reduce emissions. Um, um, consider design to reduce the requirement for hard engineering. So looking at alternative approaches such as natural flood management um, and really considering how we can reduce our travel time. Um, we also, it's, it's now embedded really in projects to consider low carbon uh, materials as part of um, the project design stage um, and, and thinking about how we can incorporate the concept of circular, circular economy into um, project processes. So this is sort of reuse of materials on site and focusing on sort of reuse and recycling. Um, um, we've done quite a lot of development guidance over the last couple of years, um, as well as uh, 
training. So we've recently reached um, gold standard in carbon literacy, which means that I think it's over 70% of the environment agencies, 15,000 staff uh, are trained as carbon literate. Um, and pro possibly one of the key one of the most important measures is that we are really focusing on how we monitor our carbon. So, um, for instance, we're using a carbon planning tool on uh, projects called ERIC, uh, which enables us to calculate how much carbon uh, will be produced by a particular construction project um, so that we can really work at how to reduce that figure before the work has even started. And this tool also allows us to um, continue to monitor how much carbon is being uh, produced by a project throughout the life cycle of that project. And the use of, of tools like this are built into our environmental um, minimum te technical requirements. So they're the specifications by which that our subcontractors have to follow um, when, they, when they're contracted to work for us. So how does this tie back to heritage? So this is just to give you a few examples of um, how we try and um, push uh, carbon reduction through the work that our heritage team do. So at design stage, uh, we're very much talking about um, integrating heritage into projects from a, a very early stage. So really getting those discussions going with project teams, um, uh, encouraging them to use heritage data to uh, inform sort of softer, softer engineering solutions such as natural flood management, uh, of which there are many different types, um, and also using um, heritage data to inform uh, uh, strategies for biodiversity net gain such as historic landscape characterization data. Um, we also very much focus on early engagement with our stakeholders, so Historic England and the local planning authorities. Um, and we're in the process of setting up um, agreed ways of working with uh, Historic England at the moment. Um, and really getting those carbon, dis uh, those discussions about carbon going uh, with our framework contractors uh, stage um, so and also we're looking at how we uh, can push for the use of local locally sourced traditional materials uh, on sites but whilst following the guidance for um, material selection so it's not always um, the most carbon friendly solution is not always the most heritage friendly solution so it's having those discussions and, um, and coming to an agreement. Um, so at development stage, um, some of the measures that we're pursuing uh, include increasing the coverage of our non-intrusive surveys in order to um, try and target uh, intrusive field investigations better in order to reduce the amount of uh, plant machinery time and travel costs, um, all of which um, create more carbon emissions. Um, we also encourage cross-disciplinary communication with our supply teams to try and avoid uh, replications in surveys. So a GI team going out to do GI for engineering purposes, um, not talking to the heritage team, and then the heritage team having to send out another team to do more GI for their purposes. And finally, uh, thinking about travel um, and um, putting in place restrictions on where we send our, um, our samples for analysis. So rather than sticking them on the flight out to, the, to America because it's quicker, sometimes cheaper, um, considering sending them to, close to home. Um, so I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of how our heritage team are working towards meeting the A's um, uh, net zero by 2030. And, uh, and it gives you some ideas on topics for discussion later on.